There's two things that are costing us money in this problem. We're at, and we're asked to find the cost based on the velocity. Uh, there's two things. There's the chauffeur. Uh, I'm not a chauffeur. So let's do chauffeur. And then there is uh, the gallons that we've driven. Uh, the cost per gallon, the cost. Cost for the gallons and the cost for the chauffeur. So what, what's tricky about this problem is that the units get kind of crazy to think about. <clears throat> this is miles per gallon, and then we're dealing with uh, dollars per gallon, and then velocity is miles per hour. Sometimes we have to, somehow we have to work all this stuff out so that we're just talking about dollars in the end. We're supposed to be modeling cost based on velocity. So whatever we calculate, we can make sure units cancel out. And we're just left with cost. So we can start with the chauffeur. I think that will be easier. Uh, the chauffeur is $15 per hour. Um, so we want dollars in the numerator because we want to be left with just dollars after we do all the cancellation. So that's $15 per hour for the chauffeur. And then velocity is measured in miles per hour. So I don't want to multiply this by velocity because I'd have miles in the numerator. I'd have $15 times miles in the numerator. And I'd have hours times hours in the bottom. I want to divide this by velocity. Because if I do that, velocity is measured in miles per hour. And when you divide these two things, you're going to flip and multiply, and the hours will cross cancel. So I've got $15 an hour, and I'm going to divide that by my velocity. So that I have $15 per hour. Um, I really just want dollars, though. Could I make the, yeah. Oh, not dollars per hour. I'd, I'd have $15 per mile, is what that would give us. Oh, which is what they want. They want dollars per mile. Okay, that works out. Again, write out those units before you decide on your final equation. Uh, so same thing. We did the show for, that's here, cost per gallon. We want to have our final answers in dollars per mile. So the cost for the gallons is surely going to depend on our miles per gallon. We have this expression, uh, 120 minus 2V over 4. And that's miles per gallon. We want to have dollars in the numerator. So if we were to just multiply this by $3.50 per gallon, we'd have gallons times gallons or make gallons squared in the denominator. So that's not going to work. We need these gallons to cancel each other out. So to make that happen, let's flip this. That way, gallon is in the numerator, and it'll cancel out with gallon in the denominator over here. So I'm flipping the fraction, the so reciprocal. And then this is now not miles per gallon. I flipped it. It's now gallons per mile. And now if I multiply this by $3.50 per gallon, these cross cancel. And so it's ugly right now, but that's the expression that we want. Because it's an expression for the cost per mile, like the problem said. Because it's dollars in the numerator, miles left over in the denominator. So if I clean that up, using just the letter V, H, we said canceled out there. That's 15 over V. And then 3.5 times 4, I probably should know what that is. But I don't. At 14 over 120 minus 2v. So that's dollars per gallon there. So that's the cost they're looking for. They want the cheapest driving speed. So we want to find out um, we want to find critical points and then determine whether they're maxes or mins. This is our cost, right? This is the cost per mile. If we derivative and set it equal to zero, we're finding all the potential maxes and mins of the cost function. 
And so a derivative of this term, remember that's 15v to the negative first. That's the same thing as this term. So the negative 1 comes down and multiplies if you're taking a derivative. And then it gets reduced by 1. Or in other words, that's negative 15 over v squared. And then derivative of this term, um, you could use the quotient rule. That might be easiest here. The quotient rule says it's the derivative of the top function, so the derivative of a constant is 0, times the bottom function kept the same, subtracted by a, the top function kept the same, times the derivative of the bottom function. So the derivative of 120 minus 2v is just minus 2. That's all over the bottom function squared. Okay, well that's it. That's the derivative. We can clean up the top a lot, but we want to set this equal to zero to find all potential critical points. And then the rest is just algebra. So negative 14 times negative 2 makes 28. And then if I'm trying to solve for v, my first goal would be to get it out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by v squared. That gets rid of the v squared in the denominator. That gives us 28v squared. And then I still need to get v out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 120 minus 2v squared. And then if I'm trying to solve this, it's quadratic, but I don't see any tricks to make it easy. I think we just got to expand this. 120 minus 2v times 120 minus 2v. You know, you got to write those parentheses out next to each other. And then make sure you got a negative 15 on the outside. 120 times 120, that's 14,400. Then 120 minus 2v is going to make negative 240. Subtract by another negative 204. That's negative 480v. And then it's plus 4v squared if you were to multiply that parentheses by itself. And then we'll distribute that negative 15. The number's getting a little big. That's negative 216,000. And that's going to be plus 7,200 and minus 60v squared. And then when we combine like terms, and I'll put the highest power in front. So we got negative 32v squared. Plus 7,200v subtracted by 216,000. So I wonder if you can factor out a 32 from everything. I just have a suspicion that we can. No, it doesn't come out nice. So you could factor this probably. That's probably how they set it up. I would just go to the quadratic formula because that would be quicker than trying to finagle this to factor it right. You know, it's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, which is this big thing. I didn't write out all that, negative 216,000. That's all over 2 times a. So I'll let you do that with scratch paper. I'm going to do it real quick. Okay, so here's what I got with the quadratic formula. I simplify 35.6. 4, 7, 8, round that up. Let 
which sounds about right. 189. Okay, we know intuitively this one isn't going to be the right speed. That's not the most fuel efficient speed. Oh, wait, 35. Yeah, 35 sounds right. I used to, it depends on the vehicle too, but I used to hear it was like closer to 50. So it looks like 35.6479, round that to the second decimal place. That's 35.65. What you'd want to do to make sure is to check numbers to the left or to the right. Plug in 35.65 into your cost function and then test the number that's close and make sure 35.65 gives you the smallest cost. Okay, Or you could graph this equation and you'll notice that 35.65 is the lowest point.